You're listening to The Recovered Life Show, the show that helps people in recovery live their best recovered lives. And here is your host, Damon Frank. And welcome back to The Recovered Life Show. It is Monday, October 3rd, 2022, joined by Christina Dennis today. How you doing, Christina? I'm doing wonderful. Happy Monday, Damon Frank. How was Happy your weekend? Happy October Monday. I know. Well, it's it. October. You have the you have the right to talk about how fast time is coming by because it really is. First, I just want to just mention it's very important that I say this up front uh, that it's just a coincidence that both of us have our October colors on today. We do not have a stylist at the Recovered <laughs> no. Life Show. It's a little out of our budget right now. It's just a coincidence. It's just it a coincidence. Is. We're celebrating. We're celebrating, even though outside in Southern California, it is still hot, we will respect the pumpkin spice latte. <laughs> uh, you know what? Yes, we we all bow to the pumpkin spice latte. And it's funny, the show's kind of about the pumpkin spice latte today. It is. In a very weird roundabout way. And Yeah, yeah. Before though we do that, I want to thank everybody for, you know, uh, liking and sharing and following the podcast. Find us at your favorite place though that you get podcasts and download us and subscribe and leave a comment so that we can keep reaching other people that are interested in having their best recovered life. It really makes a difference and we so appreciate it and we would listen to the comments. They're very, very important to us. So thank you. You. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you guys so much for, uh, for supporting the show. We really appreciate it. Um, hopefully people will want to support the show after this topic. They will. <laughs> <Because> this <laughs> is going to be that, you know, look, I, this might be a little controversial one and I've been wanting to do this for a while because I hear so much stuff, honestly, yes. Christine in 12 step rooms through sober coaching questions that people ask us in the recovered life show. And the question is, can, can caffeine, hurt your recovery. And wow, that's a mouthful. Yeah. Uh, that's a mouthful. Can caffeine hurt your recovery? It can I, be blasphemous. You know, it's blasphemous. Yeah, and that's, <laughs> it's kind of a, it's kind of a stacked and loaded question, really. It right. Is. Like we could ask this in a different way. Is it beneficial for your recovery? Can right. you have it at all? These are all kind of questions that people have. What, what do you do when somebody asks you, Christina, that you're coaching, can caffeine hurt your recovery? Well, you know, I, I always look at it as it is harm reduction. And I remember the good old days um, where, you know, if you went to a meeting, there was, well, there still is uh, coffee, coffee, coffee. And I remember people, you know, uh, drinking coffee at 11 o'clock at night at a midnight meeting. I never liked coffee. But I will tell you this, <laughs> for about 10 years, I sure drink a lot of it. And so what I tell people um, is that even though uh, they think that they are helping, you know, their energy level, it can be really difficult on the nervous system. And since a lot of my coaching has to do with embodiment, you know, and staying, learning, uh, watch what it's doing to your nervous system before you partake uh, with this kind of quick little high that's happening around coffee. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm, it's very individualized, right? I mean, yes. I'm not going to tell anybody you need to quit drinking coffee. And Damon and I are, I dare say, on the other side, we, we are not on opposing sides. We are on different sides of the spectrum when it comes to actual personal caffeine use. No, you're on the wrong side. I'm on the right <laughs> side. That's how you say it definitively. Uh, no, oh. you're right, Christina. You're right. Now, I, I, I'm just I'm, I'm teasing a bit on that. But, you know, caffeine is the love of my life. I have, you know, I'm already yes. on my second cup. Yes. It's early in the morning. Um, listen, I this is such a, this is such a loaded topic because I'll tell you, I was at a, I was at a meeting once where this guy, he was, you know, he must've been in his seventies or eighties kind of got on a soapbox about how people need to live a, a good sober life and they should be doing this and they should be doing this, that. And this, this, this kid, he was like a millennial kid at the time. And he, you know, must've been like 1920 stood up and he said, I don't want to hear it from you, old man. 
<laughs> he's like, you know, why don't you have your uh your your fifth piece of diabetes uh birthday <laughs> cake and swill some more caffeine, right? Ouch. Like, and yeah, it was kind of an ouch, and everybody was like, oh man, like it was one of those kind of like newcomer uh, missteps, you know, those mm -hmm. little act outs. But there was a there was a little bit of truth in that, which I think was what it made it, it stung. A yes. lot for people yes. is because it's true because you go into 12 step meetings, it's loaded with sugar and caffeine, caffeine being matter of fact, you know, there's t-shirts that say, and we we've got these t-shirts in the recovered life store. It's like, you know, all you need is a resentment in a coffee pot, right? Like right. <laughs> that's all you need to start. Making. So it, I would say recovery is geared around coffee. It, it really is. is geared around coffee. It is. It is. And, uh, you know, uh, I have definitely had to learn on a personal level that coffee is not my friend. You know, we know it affects sleep. We know it affects the nervous system. We know that it is uh, counterfeit in some ways, what it does for the body. Uh, we know that it, it, it interacts with medication and it interacts with hormones. And I do not want to come across as the, you know, hippy dippy, let's be careful, but there are better forms of caffeine out there. And, and, you know, from a standpoint of health, a lot of times, a lot of the things that we're consuming, um, you know, because Red Bull, Red Bulls, remember Red Bulls? Oh yeah. I never, yeah. Them. Yeah. They caused a lot of damage. They caused a lot of damage. So I say really take time to study what is it doing for you? Um, uh, besides just giving you that jolt that you're looking you know, for. I, I mean, obviously Christine and I are not doctors, although we mm -mm. play them on TV. Nope. <laughs> the, we don't even do that, but you know, we're not, we're not doctors. So we're not saying like medically this medically that right regarding caffeine, but we have our own personal experience and mm -hmm. I want to dive in. I need to know Christina, before we go on, tell me your negative cat. Cause you must have had a time where caffeine turned on you. Mm -hmm. Uh, what, what was that? What was it associated with recovery? Were you in the room? Like what, what happened? Well, it was about the time that, you know, my, my son's needs were extraordinary and I was getting, you know, a couple of hours of sleep a night and I literally fueled myself with 10 venti uh, decaf or caffeine coffees. And when I discovered that the actual milligrams of caffeine in regular coffee were four times the amount of caffeine in, let's say, a latte, I started to really see that I was fueling myself on on something, you know, like I was having extraordinary amounts of caffeine. And I'm going to say it, I did it addictively. I absolutely did. I'm one of those addicts that finds something that works and believes in my DNA. If one is good, seven, eight are better. And it was very, very dangerous for my personal heart rate. Uh, and like you said, we're not doctors, but it was also very acidic. And, um, and I had to eventually give it up because I had no chance of really sleeping. I was shaky all the time. And uh, it was, you know, uh, like the fourth food group or the first two food groups of my actual diet was caffeine. <laughs> See, I think you health nuts are ruining recovery. I just no. am going to throw that out there. I think you guys are just crushing Every last, I, I, I turned this, you know, I told my wife the other day, I said, you know, there's just nothing left. <laughs> I can't have fatty foods. Like we were, I was going to cook ribs for on the barbecue. She's like, yeah, maybe we should do a little something, a little healthier or whatever. And I'm like, ah, there's just like, there's like nothing left. Like, and I, <laughs> I, I, I say that every once in a while and I'm, and I'm kidding kind of when I say it, but kind of not at the same time, like. Like I love caffeine. And I will tell you, I have a crippling caffeine addiction. I, I'm just going to, I'm just going to, my name's Damon. I have a crippling caffeine addiction. I'm really big with the caffeine, right? Like I am big with it. Now, I think I take it a little too far and I will tell you a story. Now, I, I want to do some research on this because I actually want to come in and say, this is total BS. Mm -hmm. All of you like, like put down the, put, you know, no more banners, about no caffeine that it hurts you. You don't know what you're missing. So I, I did some research, Christina. You ready? Okay. 
Now you kind of blew it a little bit. You, you mentioned some of it already, so it's oh, not be so shocking. sorry. No, it's fine. It's fine because it's your experience. So I went to let Landmark Recovery actually had a blog post about it, and it said that uh, caffeine impacts the central nervous system quite a bit. Now, here's what I want to say about this. And although I love caffeine, I will tell you, you're right. Your central nervous system will be jacked. Now, is caffeine dangerous for sobriety? I'm going to tell you that it can make you think differently. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that's the bar. Like when I know when I pick medications and stuff, is this going to alter my decision-making right now? I don't think caffeine alters my decision-making, but it does make me a little bit more hyper aware mm -hmm. a little bit, right. Which could affect myself. And right. there has been time where I've taken so much caffeine in early recovery that it was out of my friggin' mind and did it really help me? No. It did, it did, it, it didn't really, it didn't really help me. Now, at the same time, it's very odd because when I look at this, Christina, and maybe you could shine some light on this, on the first one about the central nervous system, the, you know, alcohol is a depressant. And for me, what alcohol did, I don't know about you, but for me, it turned my mind off. Mm. I could just put a pause on my mind, like hitting a little pause button. Okay, we're taking a break right now. And I find it odd that people who, who like to hit the pause button take caffeine in recovery. I do. I find it all. I've, I do find it a bit of a contradiction. Right. Right. Isn't that, I mean, the world is full of them, but yes, it's exactly right where you can suspend anything else. So if you let caffeine be your jet fuel, which is, I mean, literally I've heard that over and over again, you know, I like it black. I need many. I like it dark and all of those mm -hmm. kinds of things. If you let that be your jet fuel, that is the about what it is in your body that's happening. I think you cut out there just a little bit, Christina. Can you repeat that? I said, when you let jet fuel take over, alcohol, uh, alcohol caffeine take over your decision making, it's taking over your central nervous system. It's affecting the autonomic nervous system. You don't have access to all the things that are happening in you that would help you make a better decision. Um, you know, we, we, it's a counterfeit. It's like, I've got the juice and I'm going to go do what I need to do. And maybe you are not listening to other parts like your autonomic nervous system that would help you make a better choice about what you actually have the capability of doing, what, what really works for you, what is going to make you feel. I mean, we cut ourselves off from our intuition in some ways. Have you felt that before when you've drinking a lot of coffee? Uh, can't well, even I will still? tell you. Okay. So for me, I do better with a little coffee and cement. And now they're proving this actually, again, not a doctor, but like, they're proving it. That's coming out that if you, if, if you think a certain way, or maybe you have a little ADHD or mm -hmm. you need to like, you want to really focus having a level of caffeine actually could help you do that. Right. And I think in the rooms, caffeine was used to sober people up. Right. right? It was, it was used to sober. Like, let's be honest. Like that's how they get, they would pour coffee down people's throat. And I've been to those old school meetings in San Francisco mm -hmm. in the Merchant Marine building where people are trying to get sober and they're hitting them with sugar and they're pouring coffee down their throat, right? And they're trying to sober them up to, to make them alert and aware. And I think a lot of people get into recovery and they have a level of depression. And mm -hmm. I think a little hit, honestly, of that is good. Now, just to talk about it like that, though, tells me, hey, something's not quite right about that talking about mm -hmm. it like that but that's the truth right like that's how we're using caffeine at the same time this goes through my head there's this old timer that's in the corner that's been dead 20 years right that forged <laughs> AA that's just laughing at me and going just get over you guys are like get over yourself like right? just get over yourself right like so but I get I get what people are saying I do think it does affect your central nervous system so I'm gonna give it yes and it, there has been times where it's jacked up my, my central nervous system in recovery to a point where I couldn't really make good decisions. Mm -hmm. Right. So I think, yes, I think it absolutely can do that. 
It really can. And in most uh, ADHD cases and co-occurring disorders, they will uh, they will discourage you from using caffeine because it does affect the medication. And it's a false it's a false um, uh, positive. You know, it makes you think that things are better than they are or you have more capability. And for me, I would push beyond you know, when I was highly caffeinated, I would push beyond what was actually good for me and uh, definitely was using that as a mind altering up substance, you know, to not be part of my brain, not to feel the pain, not to listen to my intuition, to just keep moving. And for me, it was an entire breakdown of my body, my system. And I, I was, of course, detaching from what I really felt. I mean, we've talked about it all the time about escapism, and that was absolutely one of the ways that I was using caffeine for. Well, I will. I'll definitely I'll definitely say that. And it does like with people with medications, with high blood pressure medication, with all mm -hmm. different kinds of stuff, caffeine can affect you. Right. And cutting mm -hmm. that and cut and cutting down that caffeine. I think especially, you know, what I think is a good thing is like being able to moderate. Now, if you need caffeine and you need sugar in early recovery and it you need it to stay sober then do it like that. That's my advice as a sober coach. It's like, and, and I think it's crazy to cut out all the stuff at once. Like people said, now I'm now a vegan and I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm like, well, that's just too much, man. Like, you know, you got to get the recovery thing down because look, if you, if you're drinking yourself to death or using drugs, like it's not like caffeine, no camp caffeine. It's not going to matter. Right. It's not, it's not going to matter. You have to have physical sobriety. So if you need it for physical sobriety, um, I say, go for it. I mean, it's, I, I don't think it's going to kill you. And if it buys you some time to get more physical sobriety, take it. Absolutely. And, and it's also important to realize there's an individual component of it. I mean, mm -hmm. there are some people who are more susceptible to it. And so, uh, you know, the thing that I love about the way that you and I coach is it's very individualized, very tailored for the person. I shy away from all kinds of broad stroke, stroke, you know, belief systems and say, sit down and really know what it's working for you. But that harm reduction in the beginning it is so much better than picking up a drink and it is it, it's very important to work on moderation as quickly as you can but it is not black and white when it comes to absolutely coffee. absolutely and you know what we talked about the medications which i think was so great I'm, thank you for mentioning that the other thing is here's where i really do feel that it can affect your sleep and i think there's some scientific data that will prove this too caffeine can affect your sleep you know um I was looking into the research of this. Now, sleep, we know, is a major component. And I think the lack of sleep personally, when I'm dealing with clients, one of the first things we do with health is I say, before we look at what you're eating, before we like, we look at physical sobriety, and then we look at our basic needs. Like, yes. are you eating three times a day? Do you need a snack? Are you like, I'm hypoglycemic. I need mm -hmm. snacks throughout mm -hmm. the day. I need to eat smaller meals. Are you getting enough sleep? Right. And if you're unable to sleep, you're unable to make rational decisions. And mm -hmm. that I think is dangerous. And I've seen this, that people that have a high sleep disorder variant, like they're high on the sleep disorder thing. I think that they make, it's harder for them to make great decisions. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and everyone knows that if you start in your sobriety, you are sleep deficient because passing out is not the same thing as sleeping. It is not good REM sleep. We know that we've known that for a long time, that even if you slept 10 hours, if the way you went into sleep, you never got into good REM sleep cycles and you did not get the restoration of that sleep. So I slept for years after I first got sober. I could not believe how sleep deprived I was. And uh, I, I didn't have a coffee thing back then. You know, that was something I grew in sobriety. And I'm grateful because I, I was able to have the that reparation time. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, when we come back from this quick break, uh, Christina, I want to talk about the 12-step culture a little bit more. Okay. And the whole coffee thing, right? That it's so interwoven. And we're going to share a couple caffeine stories, which I think are good, uh, when we come back from this quick break. If you are newly sober, trying to get sober, or you've been sober for decades 
and are looking to take your sobriety to the next level. The Recovery Breakthrough six-week transformation concierge coaching program might be right for you. Have Damon Frank and Christina Dennis build a custom roadmap to get you on the path to getting what you really need. Receive hands-on concierge coaching and stay focused and productive with our daily check-ins. If you're ready to experience your recovery breakthrough and start the journey towards the transformation you deserve, book a free get to know you call today and find out what is possible in your recovery. To find out more about recovery breakthrough and to book your free call, go to recoveredlife.us. That's recoveredlife.us. You're listening to The Recovered Life Show, the show that helps people in recovery live their best recovered lives. Okay, we're talking about can caffeine hurt your recovery? Christina Dennis and I went over all of that medical and data stuff, but let's talk about the real culture of recovery. Yes, uh, Christina, because I think if we have to be honest, it is interwoven. It's like Thanksgiving's interwoven around food. Yes. Recovery's interwoven around caffeine. It absolutely is. As I said before, I've never been to a uh, peer support group. You know, mine is 12 Steps where caffeine was not part of the gig. It's always been there. It's a service position. It's a highly regarded, important position because if you are the coffee person and you don't show up on time, you're in trouble, right? I mean, people are depending on it. They need it. And I think that um, you and I both offer a unique position because I didn't drink coffee when I came into recovery. You know, I, I didn't drink coffee till I was introduced to it via fancy little non-coffee drinks. You know, see how is, is that even possible? Like, I'm it, wondering, like, is this an Orange County thing? What's going on? No, I, I remember I didn't grow up in Orange County. I lived all over the world. I just wasn't a coffee drinker. And so but I saw it. I observed it. I even tried to fit in. Um, you know, for me, the acidic taste was kind of not my favorite thing. Um, and and I, I feel like I had so much anxiety already that I knew somewhere inside of me that it was it was going to just kind of increase that, which we didn't talk about that before the break. The anxiety that happens around having uh, something that's a stimulant. Um, that was my story. I didn't start drinking coffee until I was, you know, 10 years into recovery. See, I, I used to drink coffee all the way through the day. Now I drink it twice in the morning and in the afternoon and really? I'm, and I'm starting to cut down. Yeah. I'm starting to cut down. I kind of need that little hit around three o'clock mm -hmm. and my body now knows. Now here's the thing. Let's get into the real skinny because this is what people ask us. Hey, well, aren't you addicted to caffeine? Yeah, I think my body's become a little dependent on caffeine. And if I don't have it, I get a headache. But is it the same as alcohol and drugs? For me, it's not. Like, for no. me, it's not. No. Okay? And, and like, for me, it, it falls under the life's too short. And I've seen a lot of misinformation about this. Like, look, I talked with you about when I first got into recovery, there were groups that you could not go to if you ate processed sugar. If you ate, like, right. granular sugar you could not go to that group, right? Like, cause they believe that uh, sugar was a drug. Now I believe sugar is much more addictive than mm -hmm. caffeine for me personally. Right. But it kind of falls under the life's too short. So like, I don't think somebody, if they have, if they're reliant on coffee or if it gives them a little boost, I don't think that they've broken their recovery. Right. I've heard this. I've, I've had questions. People ask me that. No. And, and I do have a little confession that just occurred to me as I sat there saying I didn't like coffee. I sure as heck like Diet Mountain Dew, though. So it wasn't a yeah. caffeine thing. Duh. I, I am this minute old discovering that I'm full of BS because I sure liked the soda pops that had caffeine in it. So, OK, okay. well, I'm glad you didn't say methamphetamines like I yeah, have. A, I have a the record. <laughs> Christina, I have, I have, a, I have an announcement to make. Yeah. Oh no, my well, God, that, I'm totally well, full of it. It's so because Mountain Dew, that's like triple the caffeine and five times the sugar. 
duh, well, diet. I drink yeah. diet, right? Okay. But oh my Reset. God, I cannot believe that just happened. This is what happens. You're watching in real time somebody discover that they're full of it. Um, but so I didn't like the taste of coffee, but I sure always had my soda pop. And I don't agree that you're breaking your sobriety around it. And being a longtime member of uh, uh, OA, eating disorder issues, um, I, there are still some groups today that if you break your abstinence and eat sugar, you're no longer part of the group. That doesn't work for me as a person. That doesn't work for me at all. In the traditions of 12 steps, the only requirement to be a member is that you have a desire to quit. So I, I don't like the idea of that. But I, I agree that there are some people that need to take it as seriously as they took alcohol. Well, this is the line here, like the way that I look at it. Here's why I think that that's like, look, we could take recovery and we could spin it out to everything. Like, I don't need to have air conditioning, but I enjoy air conditioning, right? Yeah. You know, like we could take this anywhere we want to go with it. And I've, and I've heard people go there with it because I think, I think we're obsessive and I think a lot of people don't want to relapse and are thinking, oh my God, this is going to hurt my recovery. Now it might, because it's not going to hurt your recovery. It's going to hurt the quality of your life. And yes. I think we're cat we're for me, where coffee specifically, it's a cultural thing. Yep. It's a comfort thing. It's a routine thing, which helps my recovery, right? Routine right. helps my recovery. So the, the thing is, is the way that I look at it is that like, I couldn't moderate drinking alcohol. That wasn't, that's not possible for, I can't just have a glass of bourbon. Yep. It's just not going to happen for me. Right. But I can have a glass of coffee and walk away and there's no major life uh, issues going on. Right. I not, not, nothing's happening. So like, I think people need to also jump into reality when we're talking about addiction, not everything is addiction. Sometimes it's just a choice. Sometimes yes. you just rather do this. Like I can have a fan, but I can also have air conditioning. I'd like air conditioning. <laughs> yeah. Where you live, you need it. Yeah. Uh, right. Know. I live by the sun. Absolutely. Right. And well, and one of the things I'll introduce kind of a new awareness that I have learned over the last 15 years, because you brought up sugar, was that I don't I don't have an abstinence of zero sugar. I have had years where I did. And that was what was best for me at that time. That's why you want to work with a coach. It's why you want to work with a therapist. It's why you want to work with people so that you can figure out what your individual recovery looks like. It's super important. And so now today. I can have that cookie. Now I know because I have hypoglycemia as well. It's interesting that we both do that, that I'm going to have more intense cravings over the next two hours. You know, my blood sugar is going to dip and I'm going to have an intense gr uh, craving. Mm -hmm. And so, but I also know that there are things that I can do to help with that craving. And so it's a very personal decision for people. There is such a thing as lethal eating. There is such a thing as I think lethal stimulants, uh, you know, uh, consumption. Uh, but I agree with you. Not everything is an addiction. Well, I will, I will say at the same time, I think you said there is like, there are certain things that you can do lifestyle choices with mm -hmm. caffeine that can be dangerous. And I, and you know, I'm thinking back now, I have, there are, there have been people that I've worked with one in particular where, you know, a constant relapse or with very bad decision-making ability, yes. bad impulse control, just jacked out of their mind on Red Bulls that's a decision. It's like, you know what, you're probably not going to be able to make better decisions until you cut down on that caffeine a little bit. Right. And that is one. It's like, you're now not, you're not partaking in caffeine. You're abusing it. Like you're abusing yes. caffeine. Right. And, and, and this is, this is the thing I think as we get sober and I've, I've had this with sugar and I've had this with caffeine. I think this is a beautiful thing with recovery because like I said, I can have a cup of coffee and walk away. Right. I can nice. like, I, I can do that, but the, but the key is I can't do that with alcohol, but it's, I've learned that through being sober from alcohol and being in recovery, how to moderate certain things in my life, right? Cause Completely. we're all or nothing people for the, yes. most, I've learned that that's been a learned thing, right? I wasn't necessarily like that when I came in, but I learned impulse control as I was in the rooms. 
you t- and your tolerance to be in your body feeling the feelings that you have grows you know it's maturing and you know for me it became mature i i sometimes had to go extreme at first just so i could recognize you know which is what i was talking about when i went the you know one year uh, completely sugar free. I mean, no sugar and ketchup, no sugar and anything because I needed to do a reset for my blood sugar. I needed to do that. And I, but I had all kinds of other things put in place to help me go through that. The only thing I've ever been able to do perfectly in 25 years is that I haven't picked up an alcoholic drink. I have not yeah. done that. Everything else has been a learning curve and I've had a lot of different resources to help me get there. And so I love that we're having this conversation because you remember, and, and one of the reasons why Recovered Life exists is that there is so much coming at us as far as information. And, and we do tend to be black and white people. It's all or nothing. And learning how to live in that tension, that balance, that moderation is what Recovered life is all about. Absolutely. And you know what? I think that's a final thought here, Christina, is that if caffeine is something that you can moderate, moderate it if you enjoy it. If you enjoy a cup of coffee in the morning, have a cup of coffee, right? If you can moderate it, it's not black and white. And, you know, we're learning this with medication. We're learning this. I think, I, I think honestly, the recovery community has learned this the hard way. (laughs) <laughs> I think there was a bit of, no, let, let's be honest. There's a bit, and I have been in groups. I, I, I you look, we, we, this would be a five hour show if we did this, but I've been in groups where common sense has just evaporated with mm. certain over the counter drugs. And, you yes. know, a Claritin is not heroin. Like, yes. you know what I'm saying? Like now I'm not saying that everybody should take Claritin, right? But there are times in which that you're going to have to take medication. You're going to eat things. You're right. You're going to do things that are, you know, they might be a little stimulant like caffeine. Um, I think that this moderation is the key. It is a way that we could practice moderation. You know, sugar is a way I could practice moderation in recovery. I cannot practice moderation. And I think this is the demarcation line. As much as I might master moderation with sugar and caffeine, I will never be able to moderate, uh, you know, that with alcohol. It's just not going to happen. Absolutely. So true. So true. We got to love ourselves and be gentle with ourselves. And use common sense. That's, you know, I'm going to leave with that. Just use common sense. You know, use common sense. If you're out of your mind on caffeine, maybe it's something you should cut back on. This has been a great (laughs) show. I'm so glad that we did this. You have a pro and you you have a non-caffeine drinker and a caffeine drinker all, you know, all all in one show. Right. (laughs) Everybody have a beautiful day. Have a good one, guys. We'll see you next time on The Recovered Life Show. Go out and live your best recovered life. Keep the conversation going. Join Recovered Life, a community of like-minded people who are looking to live their best recovered lives. Membership is free, and you can apply at recoveredlife.us.